All right. Hi, everyone. So today I thought I'd start a new series here on this channel, which we're actually going to be calling Gen AI. Um, the point of the series is mainly to kind of showcase a lot of examples of where developers can leverage AI and other sort of technologies such as, you know, LLMs, agents, so on and so forth, to kind of just work with their workflow or work within their ecosystem. So in this first um, video of the series, we're actually going to go over different examples of how to use local language models internally on your computer. So let's kind of talk about the setup a little bit. So I actually have a repo here that we're going to be covering. And so with this repo, basically what you want to do is um, basically install a couple things. So you want to install Olama. Olama has kind of become the standard really of how do you interact with local LLM models and kind of work within their flow. Um, you kind of need that to get started. Then from there, the next step is to basically download a model locally on your machine. And so there's a couple different ones you could start with. Personally, I enjoy using uh, Gemina. So Gemma, Gemina, whatever it's called. Uh, so you could actually go and type in your terminal here, Olama list. And if you have any of installed, like I do here, it's actually gonna display them to you. The reason I wanna make note of this is because depending on which model you're downloading and you're working with. So in this case, Mistral Ge uh, Gemma 3 and then uh, Llama 3 2.1, 1 billion parameter are kind of the smaller models. So let's kind of go over my setup. Um, my computer that I actually have here with me is actually a deep learning work machine. I built this uh, about three years ago and it's still holding up pretty good. It's got an i9 in it and it's got an NVIDIA 3080 Super on it. And it's got about 64 gigabytes of RAM and it's got two terabytes of internal storage. Two big things that you wanna focus on when you're building these or working with these models is you want your GPU to basically have enough memory if you're using one to hold this model in place. So, so let's quickly just run one of these models. So let's actually run here what I have in GitHub. So let's go here. And what it's going to be doing is basically if you say Olama run and then basically call a specific model, it's going to pull it into your machine and then you could actually send different messages. So in this case, Olama uh, 3.2, 1 billion parameter is going to ask me, you know, just like how to query a quick message. So I'm going to say, um, tell me a funny programmer joke. Why do programmer? Okay, so here's kind of its prompt. So tell me a funny programmer joke. Here's one. Why do programmers prefer dark mode? Because light attracts bugs. <laughs> uh, that's a dad joke. I love it. Anyway, you kind of get the gist, right? And so if you want to pull down a new model to work with, so let's say in theory you want to work with uh, Deep Seco Llama R1, you could actually do something like, let's say, Control D to kind of get out of that. Oops. You could basically say, Olama run deep seek R1. And what that'll do is that's, that's actually going to pull the manifest of where that model is located in Olama registry and bring it down to your machine to run. Gander here. So what we're going to do is kind of go over some of my code here that I got. So in order to get a, you know, a local model to run with, let's say code, or let's say in this example is going to be Python you have to do a couple things. So what you'll have to do is actually create a Python environment. There's a lot of different ways you could create it, but this is a simple way that I like to do it. So what you'll want to do is basically follow the instructions that I have here in the GitHub. But what you want to do is go down here and create a virtual environment. Basically, all you got to do is type this command wherever you're going to be running this, you know, this command in your chosen directory. So in this case, I wanna run it here. So in this folder, I have basically um, my Gen AI series folder, and then it's, I have the repo, which is Gen AI local LLM models. So what you wanna do is run python dot minus m vme v, and then the name of the environment. So in this case, I just want a simple, let's say local LLMs, right? Um, because I already ran that and I already created it, I'm just going to not run it because it's going to take a while to run. But then once you have that, what you'll want to do is go to the location 
of where it's located. And then you'll find a folder called scripts. Under scripts, you want to type in activate. And what that's going to do is enable the virtual environment. So now what we could do, now that we know it's installed, we'll want to install basically the one of the only um, Python libraries that we're going to be using for this demo, which is Olama. So it's basically a Python wrapper that you see here for the CLI that you just downloaded. So going to install that. So let's uh, do that real quick. Pip install Olama. Oops, not get Olama. OK, so I already picked it up that it's installed, but in your case, it might be a little different. It might also ask you if you don't have Jupyter Notebooks installed in that library or in your you know, default Python environment that you're going to be using. Um, it might ask you to install that. In this case, since I'm using VS Code, I already have that installed already. Let's actually quickly run this here. So in the notebook, I'm just going to quickly import it and test it out to see if it's working. Great, it's working. So this is basically the simple way that you could test it in Python on how it's actually going to be running a, basically a model with the Olama feature. So what you'll want is to basically wrap this in the Olama library and then do the chat feature. From here, there's basically only two parameters that are required. It's the model. In this case, we're going to be playing around with Minstrel. And then you're going to basically give it a message. The message is going to be what the role is. In this case, it's always user. And then the content of the message. This is where the question is, basically. The content is where the question is. So in this case, once we call that, we are basically going to want to get the content of the message and then print it out, right? So let's quickly see what this looks like. So the question that I'm asking Minstrel in this case is, why should you learn AI, right? Pretty good answer. So let's see what the AI is saying. OK, so it looks like it's printing quite a bit of answers here. It's not the best way to look at it. Um, I mean, there's a lot of good reasons here, but basically it's saying it's really good at helping with problem solving, decision making, automation, repetitive task, so on and so forth, yada, yada, yada. OK, pretty good. Let's actually do this now. Let's actually make it a little easier to see a lot of these printing values that we're making. So let's create a function that says return answers. And basically, it's going to take in a question that's going to be a string and then an AI model. That way, we could use different models that we've already downloaded in our repository. So let's actually go here and let's create a list of questions. So uh, here I just have some sample questions, which is what is the best strategy for learning AI? OK, what is Gen AI? That's a good one. Uh, what is the best strategy for building RAG solutions? OK, that's that's pretty cool. Um, let's do something a little different. That's not relating to programming. Let's ask it. Um, what are the best software stacks for building? modern websites okay let's kind of ask it these questions these prompts if you will and then from here after we define these questions let's kind of test it out real quick so now i have a different model this one is going to be gemma 3. so let's quickly test this out what some of these responses are okay not not too bad okay looks like this is basically matching up pretty well let's see i'm actually curious what the last response is gonna be okay so it gave some pretty good examples of what like simple tech stacks are basically for building a website which is um front end usually html css javascript pretty simple node.js for the back end express mongodb for the website csm which is kind of like a, a content management system so like a basic website, basically, which is pretty cool with some users. Um, now, if you want to do something dynamic, like e-commerce or dynamic website, basically, it kind of lifts React, which is expected. And then it just changes some scalability, right? It mentions uh, other sort of technologies. Pretty cool. Now let's actually create the same response same questions basically but now we're going to test it with different models so basically let's run that command again and let's actually list out all the olama olama oops let's list out how many olama models we have i should have about four models now 
Yeah, so I have Deep Seek, Mistral, Gemina, and Llama, Llama 3.2. So let's actually also use Deep Seek as a different model. So we'll use these four models. And then from here, instead of printing it out over here, like we're doing it over here, what I want is actually to basically write each individual question based on whatever model I'm using to a text file. The reason for that is just because um, sometimes you want to output these in JSON format or text format just to make it easier. Um, in this case, I just want text format. So basically for each question, we're going to enumerate this in a, for, we're going to enumerate the questions and get an index. But basically we're going to also do a for loop for that uh, inside the question for loop. We're going to clean up the path basically, or the file name of where we're going to output these. And then basically we're going to be prompting using the return answer function that we defined above. So in theory, we have four questions and four models. We should get about 16 different answers. So let's quickly see what happens. So yeah, depending on how big your machine is, this might take a while or it might not. All right, looks like we got a couple. While we're waiting, let's actually see what DeepSeek said. Oh, okay, interesting. Oh, there we go. That's an interesting response. Use Kegel, mathematical basics, machine learning basics. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's a pretty good response. Let's see what it said for question two. Gen AI refers to artificial intelligence, yada, yada, yada. Okay. Interesting. Maybe I could create a little function to summarize each one for me. Anyway, it looks like it's almost done. Okay. So that's kind of just like a simple example of like how you could use it again. AI is not perfect, but it's a tool to leverage how to code a lot more effectively, as well as just like how to learn how to uh, how to become a more effective developer. Unfortunately, the way that development is working is that if you're not using AI in some sort, sort of way, or at least leveraging it, right, you're going to be falling behind. Unfortunately, a lot of companies are now exceeding and forcing their developers to learn AI very well. And it's actually for hiring purposes, it's a lot better to train your employees that you already have and learn how to use AI than let's say not use AI or hire someone out of school who's learned how to use it, right? You know, there's pros and cons to each argument, but unfortunately the way that development is, the developer landscape is shaping out is that everyone needs to know how to use it. So anyway, let me know what you guys think of this video, like and subscribe, leave a comment below what kind of videos you wanna see. And in the meantime, Happy developing. Thanks for watching.